All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about function types from tables. All right, so we've been looking at different types of functions, linear, quadratic, exponential, absolute value, and we've been identifying, we've been talking about important points on them, and today is kind of like the wrap-up of our Intro to Functions unit, and we're going to actually look at tables and try to identify what type of function it is just based off of a table without graphing it. Okay, so first off, all mathematics is based on... Patterns, and we've said this many times this year, everything we do, everything new, needs to be based off of patterns. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So here we go. Here's the first one. This is one of our parent functions, right? You should be able to tell by looking at this what type of function it is. If you put in negative 2, you get negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. So you should recognize that this is the y equals x linear parent function. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask a couple of questions. First off, note that x increases by 1 every time. This is an important part of defining what type of function it is. x needs to increase by 1 every time. We'll talk about some other ways to deal with this, but for now, note that x increases by 1 every time. Okay, secondly, let's look at how y changes now. Okay, now when we look at y, we're going to look at a couple of different things. One of the things we're going to look at is difference. Okay, we're going to look at the difference between the numbers. And when you look at a difference, you always take the second one and subtract the first one. So negative 1 minus negative 2, which is the same thing as negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. If I do 0 minus negative 1, again, the second one minus the first one, it's always final minus initial, the final minus the beginning. 0 minus negative 1 is 0 plus 1, which is 1. 1 minus 0 which is 1 again, and 2 minus 1, which is 1 again. Hopefully you recognize the pattern because it's quite obvious that the difference is always 1. This is what we call a common difference. Okay, We know that on a graph, this would look something like this. Okay, This 1 always being the same is called a common difference. And that common difference, common first difference, because we did the first one, is, has a special name. It's the slope. It's the slope of your line. If you can find the difference when x is increasing by 1, if you can find the difference, and if it's always the same, it means it's a linear graph with a slope of 1. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about slope later, but for now, you just need to know that that is the slope of your graph. All right? Let's look at another example. Okay, so let's look at this right here. You look at the data there. You should be able to tell what type of function that is. You should recognize it as being y equals x squared. Right? This is one of the reasons why it's important that you know your parent functions. So this is a parent function, y equals x squared. And again, note that x is always increasing by 1. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. All right, so again, x is increasing by 1 every time. Let's look at how y changes. So again, we're going to do the differences. We'll do 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. 1 minus 4. We always do the second one minus the first one. 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 4 minus 1 is 3. Always the second minus the first. And note, we can kind of see a pattern starting to happen here. But the first differences are not the same. Right? There's not a single constant difference. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to actually look at what's called the second difference. We're now going to take the first differences, and we're going to subtract those. So we're going to go negative 1 minus negative 3. So negative 1 minus negative 3. And negative 1 minus negative 3 is negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. 1 minus negative 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is, again, 2. And 3 minus 1 is, again, 2. So we now recognize a pattern for this, which we know to be a quadratic function, the second difference is constant. Okay. Now this being a 2 doesn't really mean anything for us as far as the graph, but we do recognize that the second difference is constant, and that means that it is a quadratic. 
Okay, so now we've got linear, which is where the first difference was constant. We've got quadratic, which is where the second difference is constant. We know that on a graph, this looks like this. It's a quadratic, just like that. And what this is doing is it's saying that each time it's going to increase by more and more and more because the second difference is, is 2. All right, so let's look at another example. So this time, um, this is not one of our parent functions. This is just something else. So let's see if we can look at this data and figure out what type of function it is based off of the patterns that we already have. So I'm going to go 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. I'm going to go 2 minus 0, which is 2. 8 minus 2, which is 6 and 18 minus 8, which is 10. So always the second minus the first. I'm going to say that like a thousand times in this video because it's always the second minus the first. Note again that all the x values continue to increase by 1. The patterns that we're recognizing today only work as x is increasing 1 by 1. Okay? So at this point, we now look at this and we say, well, the first difference is not constant. So therefore, this is not linear. Alright, so let's try the second difference. 2 minus negative 2. 2 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 2 plus 2, which is 4. 6 minus 2 is 4. 10 minus 6 is 4. We notice that the second difference is constant. Therefore, this is a quadratic function. And if we were to put this on a graph, you would see this. So it's 0, it's 2, at 1, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on and so forth. Then we go to one, uh, number 2, uh, 2, and then we go to 3, 8, and you'll see that um, we've got this quadratic just like this, and sure enough, it will be a quadratic function. All right, so there we go. We've identified the function just by that. So we'll move on to the next one. Um, take a look at this one. Let's look at the differences. Okay, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 2 minus 1 is 1. Now, this time we see a different type of pattern, right? The first difference is not always the same, but you have 2 that are negative and 2 that are positive. Note that if we did the second difference, it would be 1 minus negative 1 minus negative 1, which would be 0. Anything minus itself is 0. 1 minus negative 1 would be 2, and 1 minus 1 is 0 again. And so it's not quadratic because the second difference is not always the same. It's not linear because the first difference is not always the same. But if you look at these points, right, and we think about it, again, noting that x is increases, that's not the problem. It goes negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Hopefully you're recognizing, after we've looked at the changes of y, that this, if you were to plot these points, is the absolute value function. Right? So how does this fit in with the patterns that we were looking at before? Well, an absolute value is nothing but two linear lines. Right? You've got a linear right here, it goes down to the vertex, and then you've got a linear on this side that just changes slope. Notice that you did have a constant difference right here of negative 1, and then it changed at the vertex, which was right here, and now you have a constant slope after that of 1. So negative 1 will be the slope of this side, and 1 will be the slope of that side. Therefore, if you end up with one constant slope here, and then another constant slope here, if the differences are the same, but different signs, you can now recognize that this is an absolute value because you have a linear piece here, and you have a different linear piece here, both of which have the same magnitude. They're all one. It's just some are negative, some are positive. Then you can recognize it as being an absolute value function. All right? Let's look at another one. Okay, so... Uh, just a couple more slides here, this one and one more. So looking at this, again, recognize that x is increasing by 1. I'm going to point this out every time because you've got to recognize that before you start doing this. Okay, next, let's look at the changes in y. So 0.5 minus 0.25 would be 0.25. 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. 2 minus 1 is 1. And, oops. 
I do not know what happened there. Holy smokes. Um, here we go. Sorry. So there we go. And we get my pin disappeared. 4 minus 2 is 2. And so from there, we notice the first difference is not constant. So this is not linear. Let's try this again. 0 0.5 minus 0.25 is 0.25. 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So the second difference isn't constant either. So we got that it's not linear. It's not quadratic because the second difference wasn't the same. And it's not absolute value, right? It can't be absolute value because absolute value would have some that are the same here and some that are the same here, all the same number, just some were negative and some were positive. So it's none of those. Now, some of you have been looking at this from the beginning say, I'm at the bottom. I know those points. Those points are the exponential. And then you would be correct. This is the exponential function. You should know that this is the function that goes like this. Right? And you got your points, and so this is exponential. So it's not quite enough. Some of you are saying, oh, well, I see something here. 2, 1.5.25, 2, 1.5.25, 1.5. 5. And you see that those numbers are repeating. That's one clue for the exponential. But I want to show you something else. OK? So um, let's uh, go ahead and erase this because I'm going to show you the other thing that we can look at other than differences, OK? So you can look at differences. For some reason, that doesn't want to go away. So we'll just kind of cross it out here. The other thing that you can do is you can look at ratios, OK? Now, hopefully, you remember that a ratio is something divided by something else. So again, we're always going to do the second divided by the first. So 0.5 divided by 0.25. You can do that on your calculator if you want. You'll get 2. 1 divided by 0.5. So that's 1 divided by 1 half. And we all know that when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. 1 times 2 over 1 is 2. 2 divided by 1 is 2. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. Note that there is a constant ratio. A constant ratio makes it exponential. All right? So now we've got ways to identify, either by differences or ratios, each of the four types of functions. All right? We're going to look at one more, which again is not a parent function, to see if we can figure out what type of function this is. OK? So first, we're going to check linear. Do you remember what makes it linear? Well, linear is constant first difference. OK? So let's check. And you say, oh, Mr. Bywater, but you don't even need to check that because x is not increasing by 1. And so therefore, we say, oh, that means we cannot use any of our patterns. Regardless of what we got for the differences, it would not matter. All right? So what I want to do is I want to actually give you one more that we can try this for. So here we go. We'll go one more table. This will be our final one. So we got x and y. And so let's just put in some x values. Let's go negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. All right. And uh, let's just say we got 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 3. All right, so let's see if we can figure out what these are. OK, so first we'll check for the linear. We'll check linear, constant first difference. So I'll go 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 2. 1 minus negative 1 would be positive 2. And 3 minus 1 would be positive 2. The first difference is not the same, so it's not linear. All right, now you may look at this and say already, oh, but, 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 they're all twos, and I got some negatives here and some positives here. It could be positives and negatives, but the fact that it's constant here but negative, constant here but positive, that then refers to the fact that this is an absolute value. Okay, and you could draw the graph and you could see that. 
What I want to do is I just want to show you, double check, make sure whether it's quadratic or not. You don't have to do this um, as you're doing your homework. Once you find out which one it is, you can just stop. Okay, this one is absolute value. We stop there. But let's just go through and check the others just so that we remember. Quadratic, remember, is a constant second difference. Okay, so negative 2 minus negative 2 will be 0. 2 minus negative 2 is 4. And 2 minus 2 is 0. Note that the second difference is not constant. You have to be very, very careful. Don't look and see all the 2's and be like, oh yeah, they're going to be the same. They are the same at the bottom water. Make sure you do the math. Negative 2 minus negative 2. That's negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. Go through, do all the math, make sure, and see. Because you'll see here that I got 0, 4, 0, which means that it is not quadratic. And then I'm going to do the last step. I'm going to check for the exponential. right? And remember, exponential has a constant ratio. All right, so to check for the constant ratio, I'll do this one divided by that one, one divided by three, which is one third, and then I'll do negative one divided by one, which is negative one. I'll do one divided by negative one, which is again negative one, and I will do three divided by one, which is three. And note that the ratio is not constant, it is changing significantly, and so therefore it is not exponential. Alright, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what's going on here and uh, that's good enough for tonight. Please make sure that you understand each of these and you're able to apply them because that's what we're going to do in class. Alright, that's all for now.